Hi everyone, welcome to the Oaklers YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to be making the mystery box for the Sally Tomato Oakle Roots monthly mystery box. This is for March. This is a brand spanking new pattern and it comes to us straight from Sally Tomato. You guys are gonna love this. You've been asking for something like this for a while. Today, we are making the morning post and this is from Sally Tomato Patterns. Now, I have had laptop bag requested Four years, so many people wanting a laptop bag, and this is a proper laptop bag. I'm gonna walk you through everything, and then we'll talk about what size laptop it'll fit, and we'll talk about what it looks like on, but this bag has two exterior pockets. You can't see it, this right here, this is a little hidden exterior pocket, nice and big, perfect for a tablet, a Kindle, a notepad and pen, things like that. On the back, we have the same thing. We have another exterior pocket, Bob, I am. If you got the kit, I worked very hard to try to keep this mostly neutral, but you have some options. So you can see the gusset and the top here. This is a lot of color blocking, but they're very neutral, warm browns, things like that. The box is gonna come with this beautiful floral canvas here. You can use that, or if you wanna make this maybe for your husband or for your father or son or something like that, maybe you have more of like a, a neutral print you want here or a fun print that they really love. You can use your own material here if you'd like. We also made sure that if you decided you wanted to use the super fun lining, which let me show you, <gasps> look at that lining, it's got tigers on it. <laughs> if you wanted to use this really fun lining print, you could do that instead and use that on the exterior, which I think would look so cool. The lining does not have any pockets, but you can definitely add a zipper pocket, slip pocket, anything like that if you'd like. We've added pockets like that on the channel so many times. So this bag, I'm gonna say, guys, I'm gonna say this is a beginner-friendly pattern because there isn't a whole lot going on. We have two exterior pockets. The zipper's really easy to do. It is a bounded bag, meaning there is binding. That's how we finish it all off. I personally love binding in the tutorial today. I'm gonna show you how to make binding using quilt cotton, which if you've been around for a moment, you know I never do that. I never make the binding with quilt cotton. Now here's the thing, making binding with your own quilt cotton, which you'll have enough of the lining if you have the kit to do it, it just takes time. It takes time, it does. When you're making binding using quilt cotton, here's the thing, you've got your quilt cotton, which is woven material, right? You've got threads going like this and threads going like this. They grid like that, right? Well, when we make a binding using quilt cotton, we cut the binding on the diagonal. So we cut it on the bias, which allows the quilt cotton to stretch really nicely, which means when you're going around these curves, you don't have any bunching. I love to use water resistant canvas, like little one inch strips and I just smack them onto the binding. But when we do that, there's no stretch. So there's a lot of bunching. I personally don't mind that because I don't think anybody's really looking in these corners. However, I know some of you guys are perfectionists and I respect that. And for those of you who really love that perfectly smooth bounded corner like we have here, quilt cotton is the way to go. It's not hard by any means, it's very simple. And it is a skill set I think every bag maker should have. However, it does just take a little bit of extra time. So you can see this bag has the option of a little handle. There's also a adjustable, removable strap over here. I'm gonna go grab my laptop and I'm gonna show you how it fits in the bag and then we can talk about the whole size of this. Okay, so this is my MacBook. It's about 14 to 15 inches by 10 inches. So that's the size of mine. And I can very easily put this in the bag. So I've got the bag, slide it in there, fits perfectly. All of the edges, so the front panel, back panel, sides, bottom, top, all of it has foam. I do encourage you to use that foam. Unless you know for sure you're never gonna put electronics in here, go ahead and use Decoval Light or something like that. But if you think you're gonna be using this for a laptop, you do need the foam added to the bag to protect it. All right, so now I'm gonna show you what this looks like on. Let me get on my step stool. I am five feet, four inches, uh, size small or medium, depending on the day. And this is how it hangs on my side. It is a perfect laptop bag. I mean, look how cute that is. That is so cute. It's the perfect size, it's comfortable. We're using a really nice webbing today that's not very bulky. So again, if you're using the box, it's not a very bulky webbing. This is a one inch webbing, but you can definitely use a one and a half inch webbing if you'd like. Just make sure you use the right hardware to go with it. So you see you have the strap like this if you'd like it. You can also just take the strap off and just carry it by its handles if you'd like. Ah. I love this. I love how simple it is, how sleek and classic it is, but you can have a lot of fun with it. So if you look at the pattern, in the photo of the pattern, they actually use one print of material for the whole bag, and it looks amazing. You guys know me. 
I like scrappy. I like to chop things up a little bit, which is why we're doing a lot of the color blocking here. Um, but you can easily modify this to give it your own style. So thank you so much to Sally Tomato for not only allowing me to use your patterns in my tutorials, but also partnering with me on this box. I'll be honest, I was kind of surprised we were able to do this box this month because this is a pretty big bag considering the price of the box. So you have a lot going on here and we really wanted to make sure you had some options. So again, if you want to change out this little zipper cover, if you have your own material you want to use here, or if you want to get a little funky and use the lining material for the exterior, you can definitely do that. Just make sure if you're using quilt cotton for your exterior, make sure you add a woven interfacing to it. You're going to want to beef it up just a little bit. As you can see, we're using a mixture of canvas material and faux leather, so we're good on our exterior, but you have a lot of options with this, which is really exciting. If you're new to the Oak Lords YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all, leave them down in the comments section. I will have timestamps. There are a few steps to this. Like I said, I really do believe this is beginner friendly. Nothing about this is incredibly challenging. I'm gonna walk you through it. I'm gonna give you little options. If, you, if you're a little worried about these side connectors over here, I have other options for you. If you have any questions or any other Sally Tomato patterns you would like to see on the channel, make sure you leave them down in the comment section below. If there's a pattern you really want to see in the monthly mystery box, leave that down in the comments as well. I'm always looking for cool new patterns to put in the mystery box. I was so excited. Sally Tomato has a handful of brand new patterns they're working on, so I was so, so incredibly honored that they would release it with the box. I know that's something that a lot of people have been asking for is new patterns to come with these boxes. So this has been a really, really fun one to work on. Okay guys, let's get started. So for the exterior, I would suggest about a yard of fabric. We're really mixing it up today and I need to talk about that for a little bit. So for the exterior, we have this canvas piece that's part of the box. Canvas is great because you don't really need to add any interfacing to it. If you like it to be a little bit beefier and you want to add some woven interfacing, go ahead and do that. Adding woven interfacing to canvas is not going to is not going to hurt it or cause any problems with making the bag, but this is going to be for the front panel. And then for the zipper cover and then the top zipper gusset, we have this other canvas here, which is kind of like a sandy color. And then for the bottom gusset and then the exterior top panel, we have this faux leather. So you see, I'm really mismatching it here. If you look at the picture for the pattern, it's all one piece of fabric, which is beautiful. I wanted to kind of mix it up a little bit today, but Here's the thing, while it is a lot of Mod Podginess here, all the cuts are fairly small. So if you wanna use your own material here, go for it. If you wanna add something else, definitely go for it. Even putting together this box, everything did have to kind of be changed last minute because of what was available. So we do have a bit of a kind of a kind of a scrappy look, but I think it's gonna all come together really nice. However, the lining fabric that was included for the main lining panels, I did ask them to make sure that there was enough of this. So if instead of this floral for the front pocket, you could use this beautiful tiger print, which is so fun. So you will have enough of this if you wanna use this for that bottom pocket and also the little zipper cover, which I think would be really cool. However, this is quilt cotton, so if you do use this for the exterior, I do recommend you add some woven interfacing to it. I'll have a link down below for my favorite woven interfacing, but I think that would be really cool. If I have time, I'm gonna make another bag with this as the exterior because I think both of these are really beautiful prints, but they're very different from one another. But they'll both work with the extras, with the vinyl and the other canvas. For the lining, you're gonna need about a yard of fabric. You're gonna have two main big panels that are for like the inside, and then the rest of the lining are for pockets. So the pockets on the front and the back of the exterior of the bag, for the gussets, for the binding. So you can mix this up a lot. If you have one print like we have here that you really wanna showcase on the inside of the bag, then this is for the main panels. There's no lining pockets in this, so the rest of the lining is just gusset and binding. We are using quilt cotton for the lining. We're not interfacing it with anything because woven interfacing was not included in the box. However, I know a lot of people really like to add woven interfacing to quilt cotton no matter where it's going. So if you wanna do that, go ahead and do that. Another great option for lining is water resistant canvas, which is lightweight and doesn't require any interfacing, but it's still very sturdy. So I'll have links for that down below as well if you wanna give it a try. The only stabilizer that's being included in the box this month is this foam, which I've never worked with foam like this before. It's got like little air pockets. It's like kind of like a gridded foam. So I'm excited to try this. You're going to need about a half a yard of this. 
And then for the remaining items in the box, you're gonna need three zippers. Two zippers that are 14 inches long and one zipper that is 24 inches long and at least three zipper pulls. One for the front of the bag, one for the back of the bag, and one for the main zipper. I know a lot of people like to have a double zip here, so if you wanna use two zippers for the main zipper, go ahead and do that. We also have a little handmade tag here, which is very cute. And then we're gonna be using webbing for the strap and the handles. I would say have at least three yards of this webbing. And then we have two one inch swivel hooks, two one inch D-rings and a one inch slider because we will be making a crossbody adjustable strap with this. Here's all the other stuff I'll be using. Lots of clips as always. Double sided tape is gonna be very handy today. I'm using a Microtex 8012 needle. For the bobbin thread, I have a Guterman thread from Joann's. And for the top thread, I'm using this gold Tex 35 weight thread from Wizardry Stitchery. I always have a stiletto on hand. And then I have a heat erasing pen and then an air erasing marker, a lighter for cleaning up any loose threads, and then a small one inch by six inch ruler. Now let's go through the pattern pieces. First, we have pattern piece A, which is gonna be your top front panel. You're gonna have two of these cuts. For this, we're using that faux leather, which I think is really beautiful. And then for the bottom part, which is the pocket, you have pattern piece B. This is that floral canvas. This is again where I said if you wanted to instead use that tiger lining print, you can definitely do that. If you wanna beef this up, go ahead and put some woven interfacing on here. This is a canvas, but it is still pretty lightweight. I think once we attach all of this to the foam, it's gonna be fine. But again, I know a lot of you guys do like your structure. So go ahead and add woven interfacing to this if you'd like. Between these two pieces is going to be a zipper cover. We're gonna be using this, this kind of sand color for that. I will say originally we had designed it to have this floral as a zipper cover, but there wasn't enough of that material to make it happen. So instead we're gonna be using this sand colored canvas here for that zipper cover. So it's just gonna be like a little dividing line that goes between the top panel and the bottom panel. But this is also the material we use for the zipper gusset going around. So it's gonna to tie together really nicely. Next we have pattern pieces D and E. So pattern piece D is for the zipper gusset. So this is the gusset that goes along the top of the bag. We have two cuts of our sand colored canvas. And then we have two cuts of lining. And then we have two cuts of the foam. For the bottom gusset, we have pattern piece E. And I will tell you that you need to be careful when you cut this. So when you're cutting this, if you're using the kit, cut this bottom gusset piece first and then cut the other pieces. I didn't do that. So I didn't have a long enough piece left over to cut a full gusset. So instead I did still have enough to cut two pieces and sew them together. So if you had a directional print for this bottom gusset, that's another option. Just cut two of these pieces and then sew them together and then trim it down so that it's the finished size per the pattern. Either way works. So if you kind of mess up like I did, don't freak out. You still have enough material to make it work. So we have an exterior piece, which is that beautiful faux leather. And then we have a lining cut and then we have a piece of foam to go with it. Next, we have pattern piece F. Now this is gonna be for the lining main panels. So when you open the bag, this is really what you see the most of. Again, remember, you can use this instead if you want for the exterior instead of that flower. Just make sure you add some woven interfacing because it is very lightweight. So we have two cuts of this, and then we also have two cuts of the foam. This is, this is going to provide a lot of structure for the bag, and you definitely wanna use the foam, especially if you're gonna be putting any sort of electronics in this bag. Next up, we have a lining cut. This is pattern piece G. This is actually going to be to make our own binding. We're gonna be making bias binding today. I know, we never do that. We always use waterproof canvas. You guys know waterproof canvas for lining is my go-to or water resistant canvas. Water resistant canvas is nice and lightweight. And then when you make your own binding, you just have a cut. You can actually buy water resistant canvas already cut down to one inch. So you guys know how much I love a water resistant canvas for the lining. However, that wasn't an option for the box. And so we are gonna be doing this. It's always good to know other ways to do these things. So we are gonna be using quilt cotton today. So for this, you have a nice large cut and then we're gonna trim this down and make our own binding. The nice thing about a bias binding though is that it stretches as it goes around corners. So you don't have as much bunching as you would with a water resistant canvas. However, it does take a little bit more time to put it all together. And then after that, we have pattern piece H. This is two cuts of lining. These are for the pockets for the front and the back of the exterior of the bag. And the final pieces I have here are a couple pieces of lining. This is for the piece eye pocket facing. So this is gonna to be to help install the zipper on the exterior and the back. It's, it's pretty easy, I'll show you how to do it. And then you're also gonna to wanna to cut out this little three inch circle template. This is gonna to be to round all the corners to make it easy to kind of sew it all together. So to get started, grab both of your pattern piece A's, which are those top ones, and make a mark five inches on the bottom in from each corner. So five inches from the left side, five inches from the right side. Just make small marks so that you know where to put your handles. So we'll do this one at a time. So grab your piece A and lay it so that if it's a directional print, the top is over here. Grab your handle 
and lay your handle so that the bottom right edge is lining up with the bottom edge of A and the handle's going up towards the top. And we're going to put our handle, starting on the left side, to the right of that mark. So just like this. So the left side of the handle is five inches away from the left side of piece A. If you want to use double-sided tape here to help keep it all together, you can do that. Or you can just grab some clips. I find clips work pretty well. Next, grab a small ruler and you're going to measure two and a half inches up from the bottom edge. And I'm just marking a light line with my air erasing marker so that I know this is where I have to sew. So now we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch a rectangle that goes along the bottom edge, up along the side, over that two and a half inch mark, and then back down the other side, an eighth of an inch from the edges, and then right over that line. All right, so once you have that top stitched, take your strap, straighten it out, and bring it down so that the right edge of the strap lines up with that mark over here on the right side. Just like that, and keep it as straight as possible. And then once again, grab a small ruler and measure two and a half inches up from the bottom edge. And once again, we're gonna top stitch around all these edges, making sure we sew right over that two and a half inch mark on our webbing. And there you go, that's how you attach one handle. Go ahead and repeat that with your other handle and your other piece A. So once you have both of the handles stitched on, go ahead and put these top panels to the side for just a moment. So now we're gonna grab our pattern piece Bs, which are our two bottom pocket pieces, and then also our zipper facing. And I suggest you find the midpoint on the top edge of each of your pattern piece Bs, and also the midpoint on the top edge, which is this inner little dip here, right here on your facing. So we're gonna do these one at a time just like before. Take your pattern piece B and lay it right side up. Take your facing and lay your facing right side down. So the right sides together and the little cutout notch should be on the top. And then line up the top edge of your facing with the top edge of pattern piece B and also try to line up your midpoints. So this is where a small ruler comes in handy because I can kind of just put this down and make sure my midpoints are lining up and then I can line up the top pieces of my facing. There we go. If you want to use some washi tape here to hold this down, that could be very useful. I think I actually will do that because this is very lightweight material. There we go. So you want to keep everything as straight as possible. I'm going to grab some washi tape and I'm just going to put some washi tape on the bottom edge because we are going to be sewing this top inner edge here. So I just need this to stay in place and not get all willy nilly on me. All right, so do the same thing with the other facing and your other piece B. All right, once you have these prepped, now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along this inner edge here. So right along this inner edge of the top piece, along the long bit, and then the inner edge of the other side. At a quarter inch seam allowance, make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Don't sew down anything else, just inside this little rectangle right here. Do this for both of them. Now we're gonna grab some scissors and we're gonna trim the seam allowance in half. So you're cutting through the facing and you're cutting through piece B and you're just trimming it right in half, just like this. So do this along all the edges, right next to where you sewed. And then once you have it trimmed down, in these corners here, you wanna cut a diagonal right up to the stitches. So right up to your thread. Don't cut your thread though. We just want to cut right diagonally from corner to corner to meet it. It's going to help us all lay nice and flat. So once you have that trimmed, what you want to do now is press the facing and this panel B wrong sides together. So it might be easier to flip this over and look at it from the back. And I just do this section by section. So I'm going to start on this corner over here first. And then I'm going to grab my iron and just press it down. And then once I have that corner done, I can go along this long edge here. And then I can make my way all the way over here to the other corner. And then I like to flip it over and just give it a press from the front and make sure it all looks okay. Is it perfect? No, it never is. <laughs> but it looks good. Okay, so I'm gonna repeat that with the other facing and B panel. All right, now that these are prepped, let's just set these to the side for just a moment. And now grab your two piece H lining cuts and your zippers that go with them. So it's the same, it's the same length as the top of the H cuts. And we're just gonna work on these one at a time as before. So if you haven't already, go ahead and add your zipper pulls to both of these zippers. And then I like to grab my lighter and just melt down the edges of my zipper tape because fraying can be overwhelming sometimes. Okay, so take your piece H and lay it right side up. Grab your zipper and lay it right side up. And when the zipper closes, it should be going towards the right. And just line it up with the top edge of piece H. 
grab some clips and clip together. I'm gonna to be making both of these at the same time. You can do them one at a time if you'd like, but just to save time for me, I'll be doing them both together. So I'm gonna do this with my other lining pocket as well. So now let's take these both to the sewing machine and sew along the top clipped edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. Now you're going to take your panel and you're going to have your zipper right side up so the zipper closes towards the left and when you do that you're going to kind of press the lining panel down so now you see my zipper is right side up but my lining is wrong side up just like this grab your bottom pocket panel and you're going to center this over that zipper and make sure the top edge of the zipper lines up with the top edge of your pocket and it should, for the most part, line up with the edge of your facing. So if you lift this up over here, you see that raw edge of your facing? Try to line it up with that. And you know what? To make it a little bit easier, I'm actually going to use some double-sided tape here. So I'm just going to grab some double-sided tape and run it along the bottom edge of my zipper tape that's being covered up by that pocket. And this way, I don't have to worry about it moving around on me on my way to the sewing machine. So just remove that paper and then reposition your pocket over it. And when you're doing this, you want to make sure you're covering up the stitches that you already sewed on this bottom edge over here. So it's nice and neat. It should be fairly close to the zipper teeth, but not covering them. There we go. Very clean looking. Isn't that nice? So now let's top stitch along the sides and the bottom of this little opening here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Go. Isn't that nice and clean? I like that. It's, it's a nice, it's a pretty easy way to do a zipper. So now we're going to lift up the lining panel, right sides together, and bring it up to the top edge of that zipper. I like to lay it like this. And then just line it up with the top edge of our zipper tape. So now I'm going to sew along this top clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. And then finally for this pocket, we're gonna flip up the sides over here and we're gonna sew along the sides at a quarter inch seam allowance. Now, if you sewed all the way to the edge like I did, it's a little tricky over here. You can kind of just pull out those seams a bit or just start just beneath where you stitched on the top here. You just wanna close the sides. So we're closing the sides of the lining piece at a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, so once you have that all done, go ahead and repeat that with the other piece B and your pocket panel. So now grab your zipper cover and just press it in half, wrong sides together. Go ahead and do this for both of them. Once you have that pressed, grab one of your bottom pocket pieces here and then grab your zipper cover and you're just gonna lay it over it like that so that the folded edge goes down towards the center and the raw edges are gonna go along the raw edge of your pocket and just clip these together. Isn't that cute? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do that with the other pocket as well. All right, once these are clipped in place, let's go top stitch right along each clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You can also top stitch down the sides if you'd like. Now we're gonna finish up these exterior panels. So you have this, isn't that cute? I love how that little zipper just hidden in there. It's so sweet. So now we're gonna grab our top piece. That's gonna look really nice. I was kind of worried about this. I'll be honest, I was a little worried about this because it wasn't how we originally discussed, but I actually really like it. I think that looks really nice. So now we're gonna take our top piece and lay it right side down and line up the raw edges together and then use some clips to clip these together. Let's go ahead and do this for both the front and the back panels. So now let's sew along these top clipped edges at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. All right, so once you have this done, you're gonna lift up this top panel, folding the seam behind the top. And I know with that webbing, it's a little tricky because that webbing is bulky. Just do your best here and give it a press with your fingers, but the webbing does need to fold in on itself. So if you wanna increase your needle right now to a 9014 or a jeans needle, because you will have to sew over this webbing that is folded on itself on the back, but press it as much as you can. And then we're gonna top stitch along this seam right over here over this top panel 
at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Just go slow while you're going over these webbing pieces. Alrighty, look how cute that is. That is beautiful. That's really beautiful. I'm excited to see it with the other tiger print too. I think that will look cool. So before we move on, let's put on our handmade bag tag. So if you wanna put it on the front or the back panel, or if you don't care, let's put on our handmade bag tag. So with these, you have this little metal piece and like this washer on the back. Always double check and see how it's going to line up. Sometimes they're a little off. So make sure you know which slits the prongs are gonna go through. And that will help you decide where the middle of this is. So then use your washer to help you line this up. You might wanna grab a little ruler so you can find your midpoint here. So I'm gonna use a vinyl marking tool and my little ruler here. And I'm measuring up about an inch from the bottom of this top panel, just right there. And then I'll line up my washer, the midpoint of my washer with that midpoint mark I just made. And then I will mark the slits for the prongs. Now I'm gonna grab a seam ripper and I'm just gonna very gently rip where those marks are. It's better to make little cuts that are smaller rather than bigger. Um, it's better for it to be a little tight rather than too loose. Then I'm gonna grab my handmade tag and make sure I put it right side up. That's cute, look at that. That's adorable. Flip it over, attach my washer to the back. There we go. And I am not even going to cover this because we are going to be covering this with the foam in just a minute, so that's it. How cute is that? I think that is beautiful. So the exteriors are all built. We just need to attach them to the foam. So grab one of your foam pieces and your exterior and lay your exterior right side up over the foam and then just do your best to clip it around. A lot of times I like to cut the foam pieces bigger than they need to be because it's just a little bit easier to stitch it down. I'm just gonna go around clipping this in place, flattening it out as much as I can, making sure all the edges are gonna be caught. So do this for both the front and the back panels and make sure you're not clipping the handle in place. The handle needs to be loosey-goosey. So once we have our foam clipped in place, we're gonna baste it all on at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Again, make sure you move your handles down. Don't baste those into the seams. This feels nice. It's not like a really stiff foam. It's a really like breathable foam. <laughs> okay, so we have the foam attached to that. Now we wanna repeat this with pieces D and E. So grab your exterior pieces D, not the lining, and then grab your bottom gusset exterior piece E and the foam, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna baste the foam onto these pieces, just like we did with this main panel. Just make sure you always baste it onto the wrong side of your material. All right, once you have your foam clipped to your three remaining pieces, let's just baste these all at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, now that we have the foam attached to everything, let's just finish up these exterior front and back pieces real quick. It's like starting with the front one. So what we wanna do is just really make sure that these straps are secured. So using the top stitched line right here, we're gonna mark three quarters of an inch down from that line and just use your air erasing marker to make another line. And now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're just gonna go over the stitches on the top and on the sides like we've already done and we're gonna stitch over that newly marked line and we're also gonna stitch an X in between this. We really wanna hold this down. If you have rivets, this is another great place to add rivets. I would still do the stitching, at least the box, and then add rivets in the center if you'd like or you can add two rivets along here. That would also be really nice. But we're gonna do that for both the front and back panels. Okay, once you have those stitched in place, grab your remaining panels, this is your lining for pattern piece F, 
and we're going to stitch these onto the exterior panel. So flip over your exterior panel and your lining and exterior should come together, wrong sides together. They should be the same size. So go ahead and line them up and then grab your clips and clip them together, wrong sides together. All right, once you have the lining clipped to the back of your exterior, we're going to base this down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Again, make sure you push the handles down. Those are not gonna be in the seam. Okay, so now the main panels are done. You can set them to the side. So now we're gonna work on the strap connectors. So you can use a piece of webbing or you can even use a piece of your canvas. If you use the canvas, just cut it to two inches wide by three inches long. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold it wrong sides together, long sides together to meet like that so that your finished piece will be one inch wide by three inches long and just top stitch along those folded edges. I am going to use the webbing. The webbing is a little bit thicker, so this might be easier for you to use the canvas pieces, um, but webbing is also a great option. So with whichever type of connector you like to use, you're gonna take your connector, thread it through your D-ring, and then you're gonna fold your connector wrong sides together so that the raw edges meet on the back just like that. Now I'm gonna use clips and tape to try to hold this in place. These are a little tricky to do just because they don't wanna stay in place, which is again why I think the canvas might be a little bit easier. The nice thing about this webbing is that while it's kind of thick, it's not dense. So even though you have multiple layers, it's not hard to sew through it. It's not like sewing through like really thick vinyl or anything like that. So you should have something like this where the front is nice and smooth and then the back has those seams meeting. I'm gonna grab some double-sided tape here. And I'm gonna add the double-sided tape to the back side, covering both, both ends of my webbing. All right, now let's grab your bottom gusset, and if you haven't already, let's mark the midpoint on the short edge. So for this, I'm just gonna use some scissors, but you could also just use a marking tool if you'd like. So now, using that midpoint, we're gonna measure one inch down from the short edge, and then I'm gonna grab one of my little strap connectors here. I'm gonna remove the paper from the tape, push the D-ring down, and the D-ring needs to be going towards the shorter edge like this. Keep everything lined up, and let's just push this in place. There we go. If, actually, if you have some of these longer, like hair clips, these are good to hold it in place because these little clover clips are a little too small. These can go all the way from the side. There we go. Just to hold that where we want it. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. All right, so now we wanna top stitch this in place. So an eighth of an inch from the edges in the fold and then right up against the D-ring without actually hitting the metal. I like to use a zipper foot here. So we're gonna do an eight inch top stitch around all four edges and then we're also gonna do a little X or you could use rivets here, which is a really beautiful accent. All right, so once you have one top stitch in place, we're gonna repeat that with the other side. So once again, one inch centered from the short edge and then fold that D-ring back and center it with your ruler. There we go. Okay, and now we're gonna top stitch this again at an eighth of an inch seam allowance and also making an X in the center. Looks like I forgot to turn the camera on for that one. I apologize, but here we go. We have them both attached. Mine are a little wonky. There's a reason why I prefer to use rivets rather than doing the top stitching. It um, has to do with my skill level. All right, so let's put this bottom gusset to the side for just a moment. So let's grab the remaining long zipper and if you haven't already, you can melt down those edges and then grab your zipper gusset pieces. Now my zipper tape is longer because I didn't trim it down to the required length just yet. All right, so grab one of your zipper gusset pieces and lay it right side up. Take your zipper and with the zipper closing towards the left, let's lay this right side down and let's line up the closed ends. So when the zipper opens, this side opens. When it closes, this side is always closed. So this is the closed end over here on the right. And we're going to just take our zipper and zipper gusset and Clip them right sides together, clipping this top edge. If it makes it easier for you, you can slide that zipper all the way off the edge, not off the zipper tape, um, just to keep it out of the way. Just be careful, you don't wanna lose it. It's not hard to get the zipper back on, but it can be a little, little bit of a nuisance. 
once you have this clipped in place, you can base this if you'd like at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, or you can just go ahead and grab your lining piece and lay that right side on top. I think I am actually gonna base it because I, I get a little, I get a little tired sometimes and a little sloppy. So I'm gonna base along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, now I'm gonna take my lining piece and I'm gonna take my lining right side down on the back of our zipper tape. Just make sure it's lined up with the exterior piece. So we don't want it, we don't want it to be lined up all the way over here, right? We want it to be lined up with the exterior piece. And just use your clips to hold it together. So now let's sew along this clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. All right, once those are sewn together, we're gonna flip the exterior and lining panel so that they're wrong sides together. I know this is a really skinny piece here, so I like to use clips to hold it all together. All right, so once you have the lining and the exterior wrong sides together and nice and flat, I'm just gonna top stitch along all four edges of my exterior here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. we go we've got one side attached so we're gonna repeat that with the other side I'll walk you through it so take your remaining exterior zipper gusset and lay it right side down uh, and just make sure you're lining it up where the other zipper gusset is again we're trying to keep everything squared up right so I'm just clipping the zipper gusset right sides together with the zipper tape and now I'm gonna base this down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance Once that's sewn in place, look at the back side of your zipper and take your lining and lay it right side down. Again, making sure it's all lined up with the other side. And now let's sew this down at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So now we're gonna fold the exterior and the lining wrong sides together, which can be kind of overwhelming right now because it's like I can't get them to meet because of all the foam and everything. So what I like to do is just line up the corners of the exterior and the lining first. And I'm not so worried about flattening anything out right now. All I'm concerned about is lining up these edges. So I've got the corners and now I'm just gonna go down and like inch by inch, add a clip. Again, not worried about flattening anything, just concerned with lining up the raw edge of my lining to the raw edge of my exterior. And that's it. And you'll see after you get it all clipped together, it does just kind of lay flat on its own. So if you just focus on getting the edges clipped and lined up, everything else kind of falls into place. So now I'm gonna top stitch along all four edges here and against the zipper at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so now we have the zipper gusset good, we got the bottom exterior gusset, and we have our bottom lining gusset. So we're just gonna put all this together now. So first things first, fold your D-rings in so we don't accidentally sew over those. Let's take our zipper gusset and lay it right side down so that it's exterior right sides together with the bottom gusset, and let's line up this right edge over here, this little short edge, and clip together. Remember, exteriors right sides together. Now, if you'd like to base this first, you can. I think I will. I'm gonna base this edge right here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And now take your lining piece and lay your lining right side down so it's right sides together with the lining that's on the zipper gusset. And let's clip these together. Again, we're just clipping on the short edges right here. And now let's sew along this clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. So I'm gonna wait to top stitch in just a moment. If your zipper is still off the edge like mine is, make sure you move it back in towards the center. And let's take our zipper panel and pull it over towards the left side. So you're gonna have to kind of loop your bottom gusset over here. Again, make sure that D-ring is down and line up the short edges right here. If your zipper's separating, just push it back together so it's all lined up perfectly. All right, now let's base this down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. 
All right, so once you have those basted together, make sure you keep your lining gusset panel nice and straight as you bring it around so it's right sides together with the back of your zipper gusset. And then just clip it to that short edge. And now let's sew along the short edge here at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And if you haven't already, go ahead and trim down that excess zipper tape. And now let's flip this so that the bottom gussets are wrong sides together. So go to the seam between the zipper gusset and the bottom gusset, pull the lining and the exterior gussets so that they're a little taut like that. So I'm gonna do one side. I like to use clips just to keep everything in place so I don't have to worry about that lining kind of flailing around on me. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side over here. Okay, now we're gonna top stitch along the bottom gusset edge of both of these at a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, once you have that top stitch, now what we wanna do is we wanna baste the lining to the exterior bottom gusset, which is a little tricky. So what we're gonna do is just going to straighten it out bit by bit. And you might even wanna curve it like, like in a smile with the exterior on the top to help straighten this out. And since we didn't add any interfacing to our lining fabric, it is stretchy. So you gotta be careful here. You don't wanna stretch your quilt cotton so now it, it'll be too big for this gusset. So just go bit by bit, straightening it out, bowing it in the opposite direction ever so slightly and clipping in place. And we're gonna do this for both sides of this bottom gusset. All right, now let's go baste along both sides of the bottom gusset at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Alrighty, your zipper gusset is now done. I know it's a mess because of all the fraying. Once we get it sewn in, we should be good. So now grab your front and back exterior pieces in that little three inch circle and we're just gonna round these corners. It's gonna make sewing it a little bit easier. And it just looks nice. So grab your circle and lay it on. I'm gonna start with the bottom left corner. Make sure that the edges of the circle match up with the left and bottom edge of your panel. And we're just gonna trace the corner bit. And then once you have that little bit traced, grab your scissors and just cut right along that curve. And that's it, just a nice, just a small curve on the corners. We're gonna repeat this for all four corners, the top and the bottom corners on both the front and the back panel. Okay, so we have our front and our back and our middle all ready to go. I'm gonna prepare the binding after this. I wanna finish this part first and then we'll work on the binding. Uh, so make sure we mark center points here. So you're gonna mark the midpoint on the top and the bottom of each of your front and back panels. Also mark the midpoint on the sides. And once you have the midpoints marked on the front and back panel, you also wanna mark the midpoints on your gusset. So pull your sides together where the top and the bottom meet. And let's mark the midpoints on the top zipper gussets as well as the bottom gusset. I already have a seam down here that is my midpoint, so I don't need to mark that. And then I do also like to mark the midpoints on the sides. So I'm gonna match up my midpoints on my zipper gusset with the midpoint on the bottom of my bottom gusset, just like that, and then pull, and I will mark those midpoints as well. All right, let's start with our front panel. I'm gonna say the one with the handmade tag is my front panel, and I'm gonna lay my front panel right side up, and then I'm gonna grab my zipper gusset, and with the zipper closing towards the left, see how it closes towards the left, I'm gonna take this zipper gusset and lay it right side down. So I'm gonna flip it like this. I'm gonna match up the midpoint on my top gusset with the midpoint on the top of my front panel and push down that handle so you don't accidentally sew it into the seam. Match up those midpoints first and clip together. And just make sure you flip your gusset all the way out so it's lining side out. Let's rotate this and let's clip together the midpoint on the bottom of the front panel with the bottom of your gusset. Okay, so I have the top and the bottom marked. Now I'm gonna go to the sides and I'm going to clip together my side midpoint marks. Okay, so once I have all the quarter marks clipped together, I'm gonna flip this over so I'm looking at the back side of the front panel. And I'm just gonna go along clipping the straight edges. And then once I get to these corners, I kind of bowl in this 
main panel here. So just tuck it in like a little bowl. Try to make sure you keep everything together. I know since we cut down those corners, our materials are not basted together anymore. So just be careful there. Just go around like that. I'm gonna do this to all of the edges and all of the corners. Just bowling in the corners. The gusset stays straight like a wall. The main panel bowls in. All right, if you find that you have some bunching of your main panel on the corners, you can snip into the gusset. So not the main panel, but you can make little, little tiny snips that are like an eighth of an inch in into the gusset at these corners. And that will help the material spread out a little bit while we're sewing it. But these corners are not that bad, guys. All right, now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine. You wanna sew it with the gusset lining side up so the main panel is laying flat like this. And we're gonna sew along all the edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you're going around these corners here, again, if you're just really struggling, make sure you have some scissors and you can just clip into your gusset to help it spread while it goes around the corners. one done I always have to do this I have to poke it out and see what it looks like because now you're gonna get an idea of what the finished product looks like oh yeah that is so cute isn't it I love the color blocking here I was trying to be more neutral I know you guys like neutral I'm trying to be more neutral but again if you want a bit of a party here you go <laughs> but on the exterior it's a little bit more neutral and if you want to make it very neutral you could definitely just use like a nice solid piece here you don't have to use a floral um, I think that I think this could work with a lot of different fabrics. Okay Now let's attach the other panel. So lay your back panel right side up Take your unit that already has the gusset attached and make sure you're working with the gusset with the zipper here and Line up the midpoint marks with the back panels top and the gusset and then let's line up the bottom midpoint marks and then do the sides as well and then once you have your quarter marks done, just go around, do the straight edges first, and then once again, tuck in the back panel like a little bowl, keeping the gusset nice and straight. All right, once it's all clipped, let's sew around all the edges. Once again, you're gonna flip this over so that the gusset is lining side up and sew around everything at a quarter inch seam allowance. You might find this easiest to sew. If you open up that zipper all the way, you should have, you should have it open anyways because or else you're not gonna be able to get your bag. So open it most of the way, but you might find it easiest to sew with the zipper open. Once you have it sewn on, just check all your corners, make sure everything is lined up. So now that it's all sewn together, we need to make the binding. So it's been a while since I've made binding using quilt cotton, so we're gonna walk through that together today on how to do it. But I did wanna show you that there are other options. Even if you did use quilt cotton for all of this, there are things like this. This is water resistant canvas binding. This is already cut down to one inch. So all you have to do is just cut the length of it and then wrap it around the raw edges and just stitch it on, which is my preferred method of doing binding. But it's always good to know how to do it with the quilt cotton. So let's, let's do quilt cotton binding today. So take your piece G, which is a giant square, and fold it in half so that you have corner to corner and you have a diagonal going down the center. And then just take some scissors and cut right along this diagonal. So now you should have two large triangles. Take one of them, lay it right side up like this so we have the 90 degree angle on the bottom left corner. Take your other one and lay it right side down so that the 90 degree angle is on the top left corner and match it up with the bottom one. You should have um, a dog ear, which is about a quarter of an inch of the little tip right here hanging over the edge on the top 
And then same thing on the bottom, quarter of an inch hanging over the tip on the bottom. Use some clips here to clip along this edge so that they're right sides together. So now let's sew along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, once you have them sewn together, you can press open the seam allowance on the back. You'll need an iron for this. You might wanna give the whole thing a quick press while you're here. So now you should have a shape like this and you're gonna to wanna to grab a long quilting ruler and we're gonna cut strips using this diagonal line here and they're each gonna be two and a quarter inches wide. So I'm just gonna use my rotary cutter and the long ruler to do this. And these are all strips of fabric that are cut on the bias so they're nice and stretchy. So just continue doing this until you're out of fabric. All right, and if you have a little bit of extra and it's not quite wide enough, just put that to the side. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five strips. Hopefully that's enough. Now we need to join them all together to make one long piece of binding. Like I said, this just takes a while. This is why I don't do it, but it is a good thing to know how to do, and a lot of people actually do prefer this over the waterproof canvas by a lot. <laughs> So you're gonna take one strip and lay it right side up, take another strip, lay it right side down. You see the slants can line up just like this. With these little triangle corners, it's always good to have a quarter of an inch of the corner hanging over. So you can see I have a little bit hanging over over here, a little bit hanging over on the top. And then I'm just gonna clip them together, right sides together. And then I'm going to sew along this edge right here at a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, so then we have that. And so I'm gonna continue doing that with all of the strips to make one long piece, and then we'll come back and press open the seams and get the binding all prepped. But I'm just going to sew them all together just like I did that last one. All right, once they're all sewn together, Let's just flip it wrong side up and go piece by piece and find the seams that need to be pressed open. <clears throat> so just press them open with your fingers and then run and iron over it. Once you've reached the end, fold over this angled short end right here by about half of an inch and then press. And then when you hold it up, you'll see you have a little bit of overhang right here. Grab some scissors and just cut off that little bit of overhang. Now we wanna go along the length of this, folding it in half, wrong sides together, and pressing with our iron. So you'll just wanna go along the entire long strip of your binding. All right, once your binding is pressed in half, you are ready to go. All right, so we're gonna be attaching this binding on the gusset side. So since I've already completed my bag, it's a little bit of a push around here, but that's okay. So I'm gonna start on the top edge of my bag, on the straight edge, and I already marked a little tick mark on my binding that's three inches from the edge. So three inches from this corner over here, and I'm just gonna clip it so that the raw edges are against the raw edges of the bag. The folded edge of the binding is going down. And I'm just gonna clip a little bit, but I'm not gonna clip it all the way around. I'm actually just going to move it around as I'm sewing it on at the machine. There we go. But just clip it there to get it started. All right, and then I'm also gonna make a mark that's about two inches to the left of the very tip of my binding. It doesn't have to be precise, but just right over there. So I'm gonna start where my mark is over here, three inches to the right of the tip of my binding, and I'm gonna stop over here. And then we're gonna trim it down. So let's just go to the sewing machine and work on sewing this first. We're gonna sew the binding on with the gusset side up, just like this. So you gotta push everything away. And we're gonna sew it on at a quarter inch seam allowance, starting at one mark, stopping at the other, but don't cut anything yet.
All right, so we have most of it sewn on and we have the rest of this over here. What we wanna do is we wanna trim down the binding so that it does overlap where it starts over here. So make sure it overlaps all the way past the top corner here. So I'm gonna trim it down just like that. And now open up the binding and just tuck in that raw edge. There we go. So we're trying to just tuck this in. If you need to trim it down a little bit, go ahead and do that. Mine's a little long and it can't get in there. That's okay. There we go. So we've got it all tucked in there. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go back and we're gonna start where we stopped and continue stitching at a quarter inch seam allowance until we get to where we started. Just back stitch at the beginning and the end. Alrighty, halfway done with the binding. <laughs> Almost halfway done. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that binding and you're gonna wrap it around the raw edge and then clip it in place. So you're just gonna go around the entire bag, wrapping and clipping. And we're covering up those raw edges and we're covering up the seams. If you find, like I do on my corners, um, a lot of times my corners are just a little bit bigger. You can trim them down a little bit so that you can wrap around and cover everything. And the nice thing about the bias binding is that it stretches really nice so you don't have any bunching. You just have like a nice smooth binding. All right, once you have it all wrapped around, the pattern suggests, again, sewing from the gusset side up because it is easier to sew with the gusset side up and just stitching right inside that seam. However, it can be tricky to know if you caught the other side. So I am going to stitch at this time with the main panel up and the gusset down, just making sure I'm always tucking it and not accidentally pulling up the other side. Uh, but I'm just gonna stitch it so that it's about an eighth of an inch seam allowance from the fold all the way around. There we go, that looks so nice. It is a lot of work. I gotta be honest, my left arm is hurting <laughs> from holding the bag, uh, but it worked out really nicely. Now go ahead and repeat that with the other side. All right, so now that the bag portion is done, all we have left is to make the adjustable strap. Okay, so if you have rivets, I suggest you use rivets with your strap, but I will show you how to sew it. So the first thing you wanna do is take your slider and one end of your strap and insert it up and over that slider center bar, and then fold the end of the strap under by about an inch or three quarters of an inch. I just eyeball it, there we go. And now I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm gonna top stitch a little rectangle right over this folded over bit of webbing to hold it in place. Make sure you back stitch really well. And you might also wanna do a little X here to help reinforce those stitches. All right, once you have that top stitched in place, flip your webbing so you're looking at the back side, which is the fold over edge by your slider. Keep it straight and then add a swivel hook so that the swivel is pointing down onto the strap, just like that. And then again, keeping the strap nice and straight, fold the strap in half so that you're putting the raw edge against the side with the fold over. Insert it into the slider on the same side as the fold over up over that middle bar and out the other end. There you go. And then grab your remaining swivel hook. And you wanna make sure the swivel points up on the same side that the slider is the right side. And then fold over this edge, this raw edge, about an inch or so. And fold it over again. So you're just, you're just tucking in those raw edges. So you fold it over an inch and then you fold it over again so that it's all tucked in. And now we can just go stitch a little box with an X in it, just like we did by the slider, at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So now you just grab your bag, grab your strap, hook it on to the little D-rings, and how stinking cute is that? Alrighty guys, what do you think? What do you think? 
I hope you guys love this. Again, if you have rivets, make sure you add your rivets all over the place. You guys know how much I love rivets. And also add some interior pockets. The nice thing about this pattern is that it is beginner friendly because we don't have a lot of extras, but I think you should definitely add a zipper pocket on here. Maybe add like a pen pocket, a slip pocket, something like that. I know that that would be really helpful, especially if you're using it as, as like a tech bag. I wanted to show you, this is the one that is in the kit for the month. However, when I was testing out the pattern, I went to my scraps and I pulled out upholstery material. I just wanted to try it. So this here was made with upholstery fabric. So this is like for furniture. I think it's for outdoor furniture actually. Um, it almost has like a waterproof canvas feel to it, but it worked really well. And so we have this and then I use this beautiful like faux leather and then some cork on the bottom and then just some scrap webbing. This webbing is actually one and a half inches wide. So it works. You can do that. You can see I use some rivets on the webbing. Uh, and it came together really nice. And also for this one, I used the waterproof canvas for the lining. You can see I didn't add any binding, but I am going to use that pre-made one inch water resistant canvas for the binding on this bag. So whether you want to make it funky or you want a little bit more neutral, I know that the flowers are make it so it's not super neutral, but this is pretty neutral for me. Uh, you have a lot of options with this and you can see over here, I switched up the color blocking a lot. On this one, I kept the zipper cover the same, but I switched up the top and the bottom. With these types of pieces, just have fun with it. I mean, really, the pattern is so nice that no matter how you decide to lay out your material, it's gonna come together and look amazing. So thank you again to Sally Tomato for the pattern as well as working with me on this box. This is so fun. If you guys like this box, wait till you see what we got coming out over the spring and summer. It's gonna be so fun. If you're interested in the monthly subscription box, I have a link down below. You can go check it out. You can also just go and purchase this pattern. You don't need to buy the box to get the pattern. You can go purchase the pattern, use your own material, have so much fun with this. If you make this bag and you post it on social media, make sure you tag Sally Tomato. I know they are very excited about this new pattern coming out. Also, if you use my video to go with it, tag me. I wanna see what you're making. I honestly wanna make a bunch more of these bags. This is so beautiful. This would be great for college students. This would be great for summer travel. It's just a great, I know we've all been asking for this. We've all been asking for a messenger style bag, a laptop bag. Finally, we've done it. <laughs> I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys. <laughs>